Every morning I wake up at 7.30 a.m. to the soothing sound of rainfall. After snoozing my alarm one, two, 30 different times, I finally decide it's time to start my day around the crack of noon. After deciding it isn't time for my weekly shower and grabbing a fresh cup of three-day-old coffee, oh, Jesus Christ, this is terrible. I sit down at my computer and finally get to work. Every development session, I start by opening up my game project, looking at the list of things I have to do for today, and then spending 10 hours staring at my screen, battling with my inner monologue, questioning why I'm even doing this. Is it even worth it? Am I going to actually finish a project for once? Are people even going to think my mechanics are fun? Well, probably not, because I'm executing everything like shit. And that being said, this game plays like shit. It doesn't even work properly. This isn't coming out how I wanted it to. <sighs> Anyway, after I go through that, I spend about 90 minutes fixing a bug or two in my game, causing about five more, before going to bed and getting ready to do it all again the next day. Well, that was admittedly a little overdramatic. I mean, if you know me, you'd know I'm way too chemically addicted to coffee to let it sit around for more than 20 minutes. Uh, but anyway, I'm back to making games. And don't worry, this time that you haven't heard from me, I've been doing very industry-relevant things. Like maxing an old-school RuneScape account or spending hundreds of hours on a different old school RuneScape account, or getting addicted to Kingdom Hearts lore videos on YouTube, or making a project management system just for me from scratch for absolutely no reason before, well, getting addicted to WoW again, because that's just a reoccurring theme in my life. But one thing always brings me back to game development. Controversy. When the most recent game engine-based drama hit the scene, I felt like it was time to maybe give finishing a project another shot. I do have some increased motivation this time. I've enlisted one of my good friends to help be more of like a creative director in this game. Help me come up with ideas and themes and lore and, well, mainly his job is to make sure that I actually do the work that I say I'm going to do. And if you want to help him do that, well, we actually started a Discord where we're going to track some more granular updates to this game and you can kind of give feedback and just kind of talk to us if that's kind of your thing. So if you're interested, there's a link in the description for that. But without any further stalling, let's talk about what I've actually done for my new game. Well, it doesn't actually have a name yet, but when I think of one, it will definitely be something cool and clever. So historically, I've done a lot of things poorly with game development, like well, getting animations to look good and work well with each other, getting a good responsive movement feel, just physics in general, doing hitboxes in a way that seems fair, and actually making a fun game. All of those are things I've had issues with in the past. So when coming up with an idea for a new game, I started to think about how I could actually make something without running into those very niche issues. And the solution I came up with was to just remove them completely. So I started by thinking back on what I had wasted the last few months of my life on, which is primarily old school RuneScape. It's a game that's essentially a turn-based game that doesn't rely on physics, has janky animations, and by most accounts, probably shouldn't be very fun. So I decided why not rip uh, get inspired by something like that. So I came up with an idea for a turn-based game system where every time you take an action, it completes your turn. We can throw that all in a grid, which makes movement really simple. And to avoid having to deal with animations or hitboxes, what if I just took another game that you've probably either never heard of or never want to hear about again, Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories, and borrow the action-based card combat, just well, without the action. So it's just a card-based combat system, but it has countering, which is something that nobody except the WoW nerd in me actually cares about. But with this groundwork for a dumpster fire finally established, I got to work. The first thing I did was create a simple grid, a hex grid specifically because I hate myself and I thought it'd look cool. Not realizing that doing math on a hex is much more difficult than a square, but that all aside, making movement work was actually kind of simple. I just took all of the individual tile coordinates and then threw those coordinates along with references to each neighboring tile into an existing pathfinding algorithm because I'm not a big enough nerd to want to write that myself and ChatGPT didn't want to do my homework for me, so I just used a star for my pathfinding. Once all the coordinates and their neighbors were into A star, all I had to do was ask it to find a path from A to B, then it just worked. It would return to me a list of coordinates that was the most efficient path between the two points, and now I had movement ready for the player and also the enemies when I ended up making them. But not only did I have movement working, I had it pretty much finished for the entire game, and I was able to avoid two things that I really didn't want to work on, that being physics and actual like platform type movement. And I'm sure those are two things that nobody really wants in a game they're playing anyway, so I decided to call it a day with movement and move on to something else. So the next thing I decided to tackle was enemies, because you can't have a fun game without enemies. 
Well, okay, maybe you can, but I'm neither smart or creative enough to figure that out, so this game's gonna have enemies. Enemies in this game are actually fairly simple. Since this entire game is built on a grid and isn't really real time, it's pretty easy to define different values for enemy abilities, things like movement speed, enemy range, damage, all of that. It's actually really straightforward. And again, since the game is turn-based, I don't have to do real-time processing to figure out what the enemy wants to do. At the beginning of each turn, I just put each enemy object through a logic loop to determine what the best action to take is, prioritizing their strongest in-range ability that's not on cooldown, and if it goes down the list and finds nothing, well, it just moves to get in range of the player. If the enemy does have a valid attack, well, we can display this intention very easily. Since we have all of the attacks built out on variables related to the grid itself, we know exactly which tile they intend to attack, or which tile they intend to move to. So we can show their movement path, or the tile they intend to attack, very easily. All we have to do is place sprites on very specific tiles, and, well, that's the enemy intentions done and over with. For the way that the combat actually works, it's if the player ends their turn in a endangered square, they'll take the damage. The enemies are actually targeting the tiles themselves, and the tiles are what kind of signify where damage is dealt. So I don't have to worry about things like hitboxes, since the player's position is just a coordinate tile, and the tile that the enemy intends to attack is also, well, just a set of coordinates. So I can, you know, just compare two numbers instead of having to deal with collisions or hitboxes or any of that stuff. So just another thing that I'm not good at that I no longer have to worry about. Now that we have enemies, well, we need a way to dispose of them. And since I have an unhealthy relationship with games from my childhood, we're gonna take heavy inspiration from another game I played way too much as a kid, Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories. We're just gonna remove all the stuff that made it fun, like, you know, the action combat. So the way that this card combat is going to work is when you go to attack an enemy, you'll have the option to perform one of three attacks. A basic attack that takes one card, a heavy attack that takes three cards, or a counter attack that takes one to three cards. The basic and heavy attack are pretty self-explanatory, but the counter attack will let you perform an attack that does reduce damage, but will actually completely stop the enemy's attack if the value of your cards is higher than the value of the enemy's attack. It's basically a card break if you're familiar with Chain of Memories, or like a stun if you have good taste. Now you may be wondering, why not just always use a heavier attack if it does more damage and takes more cards? Well, when you perform an attack, the cards you use get discarded, and these discarded cards will come back to you once you have no more cards available when your deck reshuffles. However, if you use an attack that uses more than one card, the first card in the list will get exhausted for the rest of combat. You will have no way of getting this card back, it's just gone, so you're sacrificing more damage for a little bit of a burstier playstyle. I actually thought this would be kind of an interesting way to keep an encounter's difficulty consistent through the duration of it. Since you're removing enemies from the map, you're also possibly losing good cards. Oh, another thing that happens is when your deck reshuffles, you get a curse card that does absolutely nothing. But since you need to use all of your cards for your deck to reshuffle, you have to use this absolutely worthless card. So it really puts a pressure on you to make sure you use your cards effectively, or else you'll just be hitting things with a wet noodle. Now, will this combat be fun? I have no idea. Chain of Memories was one of the worst-selling Kingdom Hearts games of all time, and the concept of an ARPG meets a card game has never really taken off in the mainstream that I'm aware of, but I think that's where I'm different because I'm just delusional. Oh, and if you're wondering how this would be balanced since you have all of your cards available to you up front, there's gonna be a whole deck building aspect to the game where you get cards after every combat encounter, but you can only slot in so many cards depending on its power and your current player level. And well, there's a whole system, but that's a problem for future me and that guy's probably way smarter than me and can figure that shit out. So I'm frankly not gonna worry about it for now. But with all those pieces in place, I had to actually blend it together. Like I said before, the idea for this game is a turn-based game. So I set it up so whenever the player takes an action, whether it be an attack or a move, that kind of signifies the end of the turn. The player's actions or damage happens, a signal is then sent out to all enemies to let them know it's their turn to do their actions, so any enemies left alive will perform their actions, whether it be movement or attack, and then once they do that, they'll decide what they want to do next turn, and it will display it to the screen. And well, that's kind of it. I, I, that's all I have. <laughs> I have a working prototype, and I had some of my friends play it with. Oh god, run! <laughs> Dig. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. You can stop one of them. You actually might live. Yeah. Did that, Connor? Oh, did that not? I thought I fixed that. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> 
varied success, but their playtests were good enough to satiate my ego and I decided to continue working on it. So if you're still watching this video, you're probably wondering why I think I'll actually finish the game this time. Under normal circumstances, it'd be a pretty safe guess to say that I wouldn't. However, this time I do have some decent motivation for actually finishing a project. Like the fact that I recently turned 30 and realized that I've never ever, like, done anything. I wouldn't really call it a midlife crisis because I don't think millennials expect to hit 60, but it's kind of the same vibe. I also have a friend working on this with me who, despite his receding hairline, is not quite 30 yet, but feels equally as existential, so I have someone to keep me honest this time. Also, this is probably the first time I've sat down and created like an actual prototype that I kind of polished and fixed bugs for rather than just getting something on paper and then forgetting it and never coming back to it. Also, for looking back at that list of areas in game development that I'm just not good at? Well, this game has a lot of static graphics and simple animations, so that kind of crosses off the last item in the list of things that I think I'm bad at. Well, crosses off most of them anyway, but that's my spiel. If I or this game seems interesting at all, feel free to subscribe. I'll probably make another video about this if people seem interested. Or even better, I started a Discord to kind of track the progress of this game. I'll post some smaller updates, ask questions, try to get feedback. So if you want to be involved with the development of this game at all, feel free to join that Discord. Link is in the description. But anyway, I'm tired of listening to myself talk, and I'm sure you are too. So that's all I got for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys later.